Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. We can uh, assemble. We'll go ahead and get started. Wind and all. So on behalf of the uh, city of Vallejo, I am very happy as mayor to welcome you to this auspicious occasion. I especially want to acknowledge the president of the military for being here and all the contributions they have made. It took a lot of effort between the city, the state, and the especially the federal government and the military for this to happen. Mayor Sampayan had a significant uh, contribution to this. I also want to uh, recognize the 10 public employees for the city of Vallejo who were out here yesterday cleaning this up to make it presentable, doing the parking lot and cleaning the uh, tombstones. I know they gave up their regular jobs to do that. So I am very happy to be here. Congressman Thompson and I, as combat veterans, of course, are very, very thankful for something like this and also that we're here to see this. So in view of this auspicious and important uh, occasion and the solemnity of it, I want to introduce the Reverend Michael Brown, who is the chaplain of the Vallejo Police Department, who will lead us in the invocation. Chaplain. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, I just want to thank you so very much because of all the men and women that are here is because of prayer and because of prayer father you have answered two of our prayers that many people has been praying we have been praying for wisdom for our leaders for our city leaders and for the uh, veteran affairs and for our state leaders and you've answered those prayers because we're here today we want to thank you father because we now have this piece of property where 860 souls are buried that that are for eternity here but they have not been forgotten by the men and women that that lived on god we we thank you we want to ask god that you would bless today that you would bless the fellows that are going to be speaking that you would bless the opportunity for um, uh, the, the people to come and visit and see what this Vallejo Cemetery holds. We thank you, God, for watching over us. And we thank you, Father, for blessing us the way you have. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I want to introduce uh, Nestor Liga uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, Please face the flag, and uh, if you're a past or present military member, please render the hand salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, you may be seated. I am very much honored to be introducing Congressman Mike Thompson, who served during the Vietnam War in combat with the U.S. Army as a Staff Sergeant Platoon Leader with the 173rd Sky Soldiers Brigade. He was wounded in action and received a Purple Heart. And without further ado, Congressman Thompson. Colonel, thank you very much. I'm very, very happy, very proud, and very pleased to be here today as we transfer this incredible piece of property, this wonderful cemetery from the city of Vallejo to the Department of Veterans Affairs. And today marks uh, the end of years and years, it actually seems like years and years and years and years, right Bob, yes. of, 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 of work. And that's work on part of uh, folks at the local level, uh, the city government, uh, in, uh, uh, vested uh, civilians, uh, community members who knew this was important, uh, all the way up the line to Washington, D.C. And uh, burials at this cemetery began in 1856. There's nearly 900 veterans buried here at the cemetery, and that includes three Medal of Honor recipients, the family of Francis Scott Key, and veterans from the War of 1812, the Civil War, and World War I. 
It was unfortunate that this cemetery fell into the state of disrepair that many of us remember. But thanks to the work of the, of the 801st uh, Engineer Construction Company, the cemetery is once again a sanctuary for our reflection. I introduced the bill that started this process a number of years ago. Uh, when I first came to my attention, I thought, hey, this is a phone call to the VA. And uh, we found out that, you know, the old saying, it takes an act of Congress. Well, sometimes it takes an act of Congress. And, uh, Throughout, throughout the process, uh, there were a number of, uh, of hurdles, and we worked it, and we worked it hard, including getting the support from every member of Congress, from the Senate, and uh, every House member who represented a state or a congressional district where one of those three Congressional Medal of Honor winners uh, was, uh, was originally from. We were visited by um, our colleague, Mark DeCano, who's the chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee. He came out, he was against this bill. Uh, and our first effort uh, to get it out of that committee, the Veterans Affairs Committee, failed. And I prevailed upon him to come out. And he was here just about a nanosecond when he figured out that uh, he needed to be for this, uh, this issue. We got involvement from Senator John Tester uh, from Montana, who chairs the committee over on the Senate side. And I've got to tell you, we had two great Senate uh, companion bill authors in Senator Dianne Feinstein and then Senator Kamala Harris. And they worked tirelessly on this. And after we got the bill passed and signed into law, it ended up in a conference committee. And if had Dianne Feinstein not been in the U.S. Senate, we wouldn't be here today. She was on this like a dog on a bone, and she did not let up. And I remember I called her one day and I said, uh, I said, Senator, you know, this we really need the conference committee. And she said, Mike, this is not going to leave this bill. That was the end of the conversation. And just like Diane Feinstein has always been, when she gave you her word, it happened, and it certainly happened. Uh, we had local leaders to thank. Uh, we had, uh, as I say, civilian community members. Uh, my colleague, John Garamendi, who's with us today, is, um, w is on the Committee of Jurisdiction, and, uh, and, and he was tenacious. He was a great supporter of this. He understood the value uh, right away. And uh, we're finally almost done. The Mare Island Cemetery is a reminder of the sacrifice made by our veterans in service to our country and those who serve today and are prepared to make that ultimate sacrifice. We're here to recognize this beautiful space for those who are buried here, those who come here to visit, and all those who are benefactors of this great democracy that our veterans fought to preserve. And now I'd like to turn over the microphone to a friend of mine, a colleague, uh, Congressman John Garamendi. And I'd just like to say that uh, with every 10 years in a, in a new census, they redraw uh, lines uh, for who represents what. And uh, in this new district, I'm gonna be leaving Vallejo and it's, it's very difficult uh, for me to do, but um, I feel good uh, about the fact that uh, the person that's going to be representing this area after me is an incredibly good member of Congress. He will love Vallejo as much as all of us love Vallejo. He's a hard worker, he's a good legislator, and he gets things done. So please welcome uh, Congressman John Garamendi. If you're going to be introduced, it's really a mistake to say that the fellow that introduced you made a mistake. But Michael, you made a mistake. You will never leave Vallejo. You've dedicated so much of your life to this city, uh, not only in Congress, but in the uh, leg California legislature and beyond, and also uh, your personal commitment uh, to America's security your years in the Army, uh, in the Vietnam War, and all that you did there. So uh, I'm sorry, but you were wrong. 
you're not going to leave Vallejo. They may not be able to vote for you, but you're never going to stop representing this city in one way or another, and that's the way it should be. As you were talking, as you were going through the history of uh, this cemetery, I was looking out across the street and looking out there and thinking back uh, to 1856. This is the first naval uh, facility on the West Coast. And then thinking back of the men and women that served here over those many, many decades. Uh, the ships of that decade in the 1860s, 70s, what were they like? What were the men on those ships and the families that were supporting them? What did they live with? What did they have here in this community? And then each decade, I was kind of scrolling through my mind what must be going on at that time. The incredible history of this place. You think about the shipyards, the dry docks, uh, you think about the nuclear facilities that were here, the submarines that were built, the other ships, and the repairs that were done over those many decades, and the men and women. And then it all comes back here. It all comes back here to this cemetery, uh, to the history that is found on each and every one of these headstones. You go, you go down the line and read the name and the date, and think about what they did. And as I talk to those of you that are seated, I look over your, and I see the men and women of our current military, the Army Reserve units and other units that are here that are continuing the service of 140 years ago of men and women, I guess 160, closer. The men and women that were serving, women not in the military at that time, at least directly, but indirectly, providing much of the humanitarian and nursing and other kinds of services. It's all here. It's all here, remembered in the headstones, remembered in the minds of families that uh, may still have their former relatives here. It's incredible. For the city of Vallejo, it wasn't easy getting this far along. It took it took your determination, and it took the work of Mike and his team and the senators to make it happen. And for the 801 unit out there, who you'll hear from in a moment, and the other units that helped here put this together, thank you. For the men and women that restored this, thank you. And for the future generations, if I might speak for them, they thank you too because this will be a very special part of the life, not only of Mare Island, not only of Vallejo, but of America. And so for all, this is a very, very good day for the Veterans Administration. Thank you for coming out. Uh, it wasn't always easy. I know uh, how that process goes, but here you are. Thank you. And thank you for taking over the maintenance and the history of this. It's a great privilege for me now to introduce uh, well, a representative of an extraordinary woman that has served this state in so many different capacities since 1992 as our United States Senator. So I'm going to introduce to you Mr. Joel Volker, the field representative for Senator Feinstein. Joel. Senator Feinstein sends her regards to uh, all of you today and wishes that she could be with you all. And she asked that I speak on her behalf about the importance of trans the transfer of control of Mare Island's Naval Cemetery and the importance of the cemetery. Uh, as many of you know, Senator Feinstein worked closely with Congressman Thompson in 2020 on a bill to transfer control of the cemetery to the VA's National Cemetery Operations. The Senator made this a priority because she believes that the 860 heroes that are buried here, as well as their families, deserve a resting place worthy of their service. The Senator is grateful to Congressman Thompson for his dogged pursuit uh, to ensure that the cemetery was transferred in a timely manner. She also wanted me to thank the 801st Engineer Construction Company of the 397th Engineer Battalion, U.S. Army Reserves, for their work in restoring Mare Island's Naval Cemetery. Senator Feinstein hopes that the transfer of control and the resulting beautification programs will send a message to the families of everyone who rests here 
and to all who serve in uniform and that the cemetery will never again fall into a state of disrepair. Uh, thank you to everyone who made today possible. Uh, now it is my honor to introduce the Veteran Affairs National Cemetery Administration's Executive Director, Lisa Pazabon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for having me. Um, on behalf of our Undersecretary for Memorial Affairs, it's my pleasure to be here today uh, for this ceremony. Um, you know, there is a lot of history in our cemeteries. Um, I am responsible for our cemetery operations and in NCA. We have 155 national cemeteries and 44 uh, soldiers, lots and plots all around this nation. There is a wealth of, of, of history, a number of families um, that these cemeteries represent um, our history as, as Americans and the history of those who served and sacrificed for our country. Um, I want to take this opportunity to first uh, as, uh, echo the thanks to the 801st Engineering Company um, I had seen as you were, um, you know, taking on this project, um, various updates throughout, and um, at times you worked day and night. Um, you, it was exhausting work, and um, the fruits of those efforts certainly show today uh, in the now white headstones we see uh, in this cemetery, um, you know, similar to the white picket fence that now surrounds uh, this hollow ground. So thank you very much for all of your efforts. Um, I also want to thank uh, Mayor McConnell for uh, the cooperation and support from um, your staff um, as we, you know, work through, um, you know, what, what can only be described as the, the um, you know, fine details and bureaucratic processes uh, that we must go through uh, as part of the transfer. But um, there's been a lot of um, good cooperation. Um, as, as we make our plans, um, you know, for the uh, eventual transfer of this cemetery. Um, you know, preserving uh, the memory and the legacy of those who served is a very important part of what we do uh, in NCA. Um, and, you know, we look forward to having uh, an opportunity to share the rich history that exists in uh, the cemetery here at Mare Island. So thank you for all of your, uh, you know, interest and ongoing support. Um, you know, that's what allows all of us to continue to keep alive the, the spirit and the service and sacrifice that reside in our cemeteries. So thank you all and um, thank you for having me. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. A number of people have talked about how uh, the local involvement was so incredibly important. And uh, Mayor, you've been recognized for your ongoing work on this. I, I just want to point out that uh, we have another uh, former mayor here, Bob Sampaia, who uh, he was on the ground, he was on the ground level uh, when, when this started. I don't know how many times that, uh, we spoke on the phone. Uh, there's an emergency, you need to call so-and-so. And then, uh, Nestor, I, I gotta tell you, if it wasn't for this former colonel, uh, Army colonel, uh, we wouldn't be here today. And, um, and Nestor, I can't tell you how glad my Washington staff is that this is done. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman, I, you know, it was it was all on your own dime. It was your personal phone. But he, he probably called four times a day. So I thank you for your personal uh, monetary contribution of the of the phone phone bills that went into making this uh, making this happen. So um, so thank you all. And uh, and we have another mayor. Where's Tony Antinelli? I saw uh, former Mayor Antinelli here. And. Uh, who had the grandkids out, and uh, this is pretty special when you have uh, former mayors and uh, councilwoman Pippin Dews over here, and councilwoman is over here as as well. So thank you. Uh, and it was uh, it was stated a couple of times 
we wouldn't be at this point in the process if it wasn't for uh, the uh, 801st. Uh, they did remarkable work. And, and the truth be known, when we wanted the VA to take this, the answer was no. And um, the uh, committee in both the House and the Senate, the answer was no. Uh, the military, every, every branch of the military that we tried to get in, the answer was no. And the consolation prize uh, was, we'll have the 801st come clean it up. Well, it turns out it wasn't a consolation prize, it was a grand prize, because all you have to do is look around and see the incredible work that they, they did. So while... Oh, yeah. That's an army unit, by the way, if anybody's not. <laughs> and so they came in and, uh, and started this incredible work and they stayed with it uh, while at the same time we were running the legislation on a parallel uh, track. And it turns out, 801st, that uh, had you not done this great job, uh, it would not have, the legislation would never have passed, been signed into law, and the process uh, begun. Because uh, the way that you brought this up to a different standard uh, made it much easier for the VA uh, to take over and um, and uh, and assume ownership of this uh, of this great property. And I'd like to say thank you, and I'd like to introduce the company commander, Captain Brandon Sawyer, uh, and thank you, Captain, for all of the great work that you did, your team did, and those who came before you. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the members of Congress for the legislative actions that allowed this project to happen. Thank the City of Vallejo and the VA for giving us the opportunity, the organizational support to be out here. I thank the soldiers of the 801st and our sister companies. And big thanks to Major Douglas Hayes who facilitated this whole project for years to make it happen. And the soldiers of this company through blazing heat through smoke and <laughs> pandemic environments put their time and effort to restore this place of honor and these fallen soldiers sailors and even foreign uh, foreign sailors are in this resting place and we wanted to make sure that it was to the standard that the city of Vallejo and the people could be out here and see this great environment and see this resting place back to what it deserves. So we thank everyone for the support we got for that, and we look forward to continuing to work with the City of Vallejo in the future on more projects. And I'll be followed uh, by VPD Chaplain Mike Brown for the benediction. Okay, there's, there's a couple things I want to acknowledge first. One is uh, the Navy. I'm a retired submarine guy, so <clears throat> got to put that out there. Second thing is, you know, when I, I, and I said we prayed and, and people are praying for this to happen. And then uh, a lot of people wanted it to happen and God just intervened. And he says, I'm going to intervene by letting the system work. And uh, it worked, it did and uh, everybody was involved and so this is great that uh, god said let the system work let all the politicians let all the people who care about these this place let them work it and uh, then you'll earn the results so we want to thank you for all that father we just want to thank you because you love us and because of that god we have a hope we don't want anybody else to die but we know death is part of our life and so, God, as men and women take care of their deceased, that they watch over them and they watch over their burial places and they have memorials and they have opportunities to just remember the people who went on before them. And we want to thank you for that. And God, I just ask that you would just bless the, all, the politicians, the officials, the, the people that are leaders, that you would give them wisdom, more wisdom, for more um, decisions they have to make. I ask that you be with them so that they know that you are 
blessing them with wisdom. We thank you, Father, for today, and I ask that you, these men and women that are here today that you would watch over them and let them know that we're going to care about them the way we do the fallen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We've got one more final piece. Uh, Congressman Garamendi and I would like to present this flag to you, Captain. Uh, this flag we had flying, flown over the United States Capitol, and we want to give this to you on uh, part of our appreciation. We also have a uh, congressional certificate that you will be receiving that uh, we took care of and both have signed, and you can get that before you, before you leave. But this was flown over the U.S. Capitol. Uh, just to say thank you uh, to all the work that you did and all the work that your team did. So thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you all very much for being here. God bless America. God bless our veterans. And God bless our troops. Yes. Yeah.